This conference here. will now be uh, recorded. Um, so uh, we'll just quickly go through introductions. Uh, my name is Charles Dice. I'm chairman of the committee. I live in Cove Beach at the south end of the county. Um, I'm Linda Ironman, and I am an Arch Cape member of the committee. Uh, Chris I'm Margaret Treadwell. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Margaret. Oh, Go sorry. Ahead. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, and I'm in Astoria, and I'm a member of the committee. And uh, Chris Anderson, I'm in um, Arch Cape as well, South Arch Cape, and uh, I'm on the committee. So welcome, Todd. If you want to just introduce yourself. Sure, Todd Lundy. Uh, I'm on the Southwest uh, Coastal Committee as well. And Perfect. then Ian, Ian Sisson, Planning Staff. We also have Gail Henriksen, Community Development Director here today. And I believe Julia Decker will be joining us later if she's available, but uh, she's currently busy. Okay. Hi, Gail. So I will turn it over to you to say whatever you're going to say about the, the meeting summary and then public comment. Sure. So as I mentioned earlier, um, the previous meeting on open space, natural areas and wilderness areas um, happened in two meetings, one regularly scheduled and then one sort of makeup continuation meeting. Um, I will be providing a summary of that meeting uh, that two-part meeting to you. It is not quite ready yet, so um, there's no summary to review today. With that, uh, if there are any members of the public with us today, I see Guido, Paparoni, and Nancy Chase. If either of you would like to uh, provide any comments at this time, please go ahead. Hi, this is Nancy. Um, can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Uh, it looks like energy generation is or resources is going to be the topic, and you may have covered this, but we have the marine reserve here on our end of the county, and so I'm just uh, concerned about uh, wave technology. I think it's improving all the time for energy, but we wouldn't want it to impact that, as well as wind. Uh, we have a lot of, may, possibly you're going to be looking at the views are really important, I think, for everybody along the coast. and take that into consideration, but specifically impact on views, impact on marine and wildlife for wind and wave generation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. And Guido Paparoni, no comment at this time. Thank you. All right, okay. thank you, Guido. Um, Back to you, Charles. Yeah, so so then uh, oh, somebody was going to say something, Margaret? Could respond really quickly to uh, Nancy's comment. Sure. Um, so in the um, in the marine reserve, all ocean development is prohibited, and that includes also the two marine protected areas um, adjacent to the marine reserve. And that rule is sort of um, I'm not sure that it's 100% for this, but it's basically intended to prevent any energy development in that area. So um, so that would probably not happen. <laughs> All right, great. Thanks for that clarification. Um, so I'm not aware of any old business. I think we, we cleaned everything up in our uh, last uh, meeting on the 3rd of February. Uh, so then I think we could probably move into uh, the current topic of energy resources. Less Anybody objects? And hearing none, um, we probably should move on then to table one, existing Clatsop County comprehensive plan policies for energy resources. And then under goal five, there's a policy one uh, that speaks to wind generate, generating and I personally think the staff recommendation is fine, but I'll let others speak. Uh, can I ask a question before we jump to the policies? Um, sure. 
the initial review on the, it said review of worksheet, the statements there, um, the, there, there was, uh, I'd like to add to that first paragraph, uh, planning guidelines three, it said, that you'd have to go up for that on the document we got. Maybe it's not on the worksheet. It's not on the worksheet. But anyway, it doesn't mention wind, wave, or tidal potential resources. So I, it seems to me that would be uh, an important thing to include. Todd, can you direct me to which page you were looking at? Uh, it's before we get to the, um, let's see if I can find it. Can you see uh, what I have on my screen here? It's the agenda I do. packet. I, I do, but it's small. I'm going to make it larger and see if I can find uh, policy guideline three. That's it right there under A, planning, guideline three. Um, okay. Natural resources and required site generation. So I believe that language uh, was copied from the statewide planning goal. Uh, okay. But we can certainly include those energy resources you mentioned in the comprehensive plan discussion. Okay, that's I think important because they are alternatives that have been being studied. Correct. Um, and then on the Let's see, on the sentence, the next one, C, that is A, B, and then go down, not the next one, but C. Um, I don't have a C on my document, but. Oh, okay. This, I must have had it. Anyway, it, uh, mine says it's not clear. Did you alter that, Ian, after you sent out the first one? Uh, Todd, I'm not sure what you're looking at at the moment. But, okay. So I've got planning guideline three, implementation guideline two. And, and then, then was there not a was there not a, a C and D after the after that in, in one document earlier on? Todd, no? this is Gail Hendrickson. Uh, no, there was not a C and D. Uh, statewide planning goal only has the uh, A, which is I believe the planning portion of it, and then B, which is the implementation portion of it. Uh, then let's go to, can you find the place where it says to be covered, G5 dash energy sources, oh no, just to be covered, oh that's my notes, never mind. Okay, let's skip it and go down to the, get on with it. Um, I'm, well, I'm wondering if Ian or Gail, one of you could kind of encapsulize what it is we're doing here because I got very confused by the materials because so many things are regulated or being worked on on uh, federal or state levels. I wasn't quite sure what exactly the county's role is and therefore what our role is. Okay, so this is Gail, and uh, you're correct that the State Department of Energy is going to be, uh, and possibly federal agencies are going to be regulating the energy industries that would be looking to locate in Clatsop County. What our role would be as part of the Goal 5 review is to identify areas where those sites would be appropriate and those types of technologies would be appropriate, and then to figure out based on where those sites are, what around it could conflict with it and cause a problem that may prohibit that type of uh, energy industry to come in uh, and to evaluate it in terms of the environmental impacts, the energy impacts, the economic impacts, and the social impacts. That's that ESEE -E study that Ian has talked about in the past. And so we do have a role in not regulating the the industry and how it operates, but we have a role in where it operates and then to protect those areas for future development of energy industries. With regard to goal 13, which is energy conservation, we really are going to be more focused on the built environment and ways that we can help uh, the county overall conserve and stretch out the length of those energy sources that are located in the county. 
Does does that clarify for everyone? Clear enough for me. Okay. Yeah, it works for me. Okay. So this the sighting goal five is are we figuring in the abstract like if the state or the federal government wanted to bring wind to Clatsop County, these would be good sites, or is it more reactive? Like there's a site that is out there we'd like to bid on, or somebody wants to bring here. I'm, I'm. A, it sounds like it's more hypothetical at this uh, point. Right. So um, the only background I could find where there had been a study that proactively identified sites uh, dates back to, I believe, the 1980s when there was a study completed uh, that identified six potential wind yeah. sites within the county. Um, I've not seen any of that type of work or studies completed for, um, you know, say, you know, I'm trying to think of a good thing like hydropower or something like that. Um, you'll see in the original Goal 13 report that when they looked at the energy sources, um, for example, all of our hydropower is generated by Bonneville. So, and there was mention of a hydropower dam at Young's River Falls, which is still included in the comp plan. And we have a little update about that. Um, so part mm -hmm. of it could be if you are aware of places, um, to, to identify them. And an example would be in October of 2020, the Planning Commission approved a meteorological wind test tower up on Nikolai Ridge. And uh, they're moving forward with that. They've got their building permits and their development permits. Now that was not a site identified in the 1980s as a potential wind generation site. So that may be one that you want to include as we update the comprehensive plan, because it looks like there may be the potential to include that. Did that answer your question, Ms. Ironman? Um, yes, I, I think, yeah, I think so. Thank you. Okay. So any uh, further questions before we dive into table one? So hearing none, um, why don't we, is there any discussion on policy one uh, in table one that speaks about uh, wind generating facilities? Um, I, I would make a comment on that and I'm not sure how we would incorporate it into our feedback, but um, I guess I would just say that I think that there should be a policy or guideline that prioritizes areas that are already industrial or developed for this kind of, um, for, for wind generation facilities to be cited. You know, so I look at this list and I see, you know, Fort Stevens and Clatsop Spit, you know, there are, there's some development out there, but it would be kind of a, sh I, from my point of view, kind of a shame to build some huge uh, energy generating facility out there, given the um, the wildlife and the scenic values and um, recreation opportunities out there and what people enjoy about it. You know, and then I see things like Port of Astoria Airport and, I'm, and I think, okay, like that that's already an industrial site. So I don't know exactly how we would uh, do that, but that, that's, that was my thought on um, on that policy. Is My this facilities or is this windmills? That's what I don't understand. It says wind generating facilities, but I wasn't sure what that word meant in this context. I would take that to mean uh, some equipment that's designed to capture wind energy. Turbines. Well, then Margaret's got a good point. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I think it's a good point. So, Ian, you got any, or Julia, you got any suggestions on how to incorporate that into the, into our uh, comments? Well, it sounds like, um, you know, again, with, with goal five, if you're adopting particular sites uh, for protection under goal five as energy resource sites, um, we would again need to go through the EC analysis 
And so what it sounds like is that in terms of environmental and social consequences, um, you know, this group has identified habitat resources and wildlife protection and, and protection of scenic vistas uh, as valuable items. And so, um, you know, maybe we could make a recommendation that those items, I, I mean, they already would be evaluated through the EC procedure, um, but we could emphasize those items somehow. Yeah, so what I think I heard Margaret say was that, you know, we'd just like to see existing industrial or commercial sites prioritized um, so that so that, that you don't treat the air, you know, something like the airport or, you know, the, the Warrington Marina or something on the same exact plane as Fort Stevens, uh, you know, and say, okay, well, it, it, it's 50-50 if you've got a choice. It, it, I, my sense of it is, you know, we'd certainly like to see the existing industrial or commercial sites prioritized ahead of other sites. Okay. I, I have a question on policy one, which may be taken up in other policies. I don't don't see it, but it might be. And that is the addition of um, offshore wind tidal wave generation options. Where where will we be dealing with those in in this? Gail might be able to answer this better than me, but I I don't believe. Uh, those were specifically addressed in the existing comprehensive plan. So in table three, we might want to add those um, okay. as an as an issue to be addressed and new policies around those. Yeah, and also um, a lot of those facilities are going to be located outside of our county bond boundaries, and they're going to be quite a quite a ways offshore. And so goal 19. Uh, would also probably be an appropriate place where we might want to address some of those. Okay. Well, we can wait until uh, we get to that. Any other discussion on policy one? If not, maybe we should move to policy two, um, where again, my, you know, my input was I was happy with the staff recommendation. Yeah, I am too. Um, I'm happy with it too, but I was wondering if there's anywhere where um, like in-stream hydro or run of river hydro systems are discussed, or is that like too new of technology to be in the old comprehensive plan? Yeah, I did not see it addressed, um, so I don't, and I frankly, I'm not familiar with the technology, so it's probably too new would be my uh, guess on that. Okay, um, basically what it is, just real quick, is like hydro systems that are small scale um, that don't, um, don't involve like a barrier, basically. So it could be either, there could be like a side channel that some water goes through and then there's something that generates um, electricity or um, or it's just along the side of a river like at an in existing industrial site you know like just put it down in there so they don't generate a huge amount of energy but if you're thinking about sort of like distributed small energy sources they're pretty cool and then they have way lower um, environmental impact particularly on you know salmon um, than a regular dam does of any size um, so I don't know. They're they're kind of a neat new thing, and it would be interesting maybe just to add something about that in table three, if folks want to. Yeah, I think that sounds good. Thanks. So and I, uh, I think we should have something. Table three. Yeah. So this would be small in-stream hydroelectric facilities. Is that the right terminology, Margaret? Yeah. Let me see. I was just looking them up. Yeah, small hydropower. Um, in stream, small in stream hydropower, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and this While would be there, for like a a single family residence or something like that, generating their own power, or would it or be it a community be, facility? 
It would probably be, be bigger, like sitting here, like what comes to mind for me immediately is um, buoy brewing, you know, and their location, they could stick one of these in the river, generate energy for their facility, maybe the additional buildings that they're developing, um, maybe some neighbors. I, but I'm not, I, I, I'm not super, like, I can't remember, you know, how many watts a particular building uses or anything like that so I, i'm not quite sure how how much energy it would generate and what that translates to in terms of um commercial buildings versus homes versus whatever but um but something like that so are Too you long. saying margaret that, that you want to encourage this discourage it or come up with regulations for it um <laughs> I, I, I incur I mean, for me, it would be encourage it, you know, but I, but I hesitate to say that because, um, you know, there's always unforeseen consequences and, <laughs> um, but, but encourage, um, the study of it, looking into it. Yeah. <laughs> feasibility, uh, feasibility study or something like that. Yeah. Environmental impact. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't think that it would be terrible, like along Astoria's waterfront, for example, just given what, what else is already all there, you know, and, and the companies that develop these things, I mean, that's what they're thinking about is minimizing environmental impacts. So. Yeah, it says a lot of people, um, I'm looking at a website called drawdown.org, which is about reducing, um, fossil fuel, fossil fuel use and they're talking about you know putting them in city water mains um using them in rural areas to replace um diesel generators things like that and while you've got your cursor down there on that uh on that to be addressed would you add a wave to your wind wave and tidal energy mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. All right. I'll switch back to the table now, just a moment. Anything more oh. on policy two? Should I put here, agree with staff recommendation and refer to table three? Sounds good yep. to me. Yeah, that's good. All right, so then moving to policy three, um, I, for one, would like to see us add geothermal to that list. Hmm. That sounds good. Okay, policy four, Gail, you said you had an update on Young's River Falls. It's included in the staff comment. Yeah. And basically, I, at one point, Astoria, which has the water rights in that area, had apparently considered a hydrological facility mm -hmm. or hydropower facility at that location. Uh, at this point, our latest contact with them, which is maybe about four months ago now, uh, they they indicated that they really don't have an interest in that project at this time, but if there were some sort of regional group that were to be formed to address some sort of regional issue, then they would reconsider it. But at this point, it's off the table for the city of Astoria. So I'm assuming that the county has jurisdiction over Young Falls as opposed to the city of Astoria. Is that is that true? It's an unincorporated county. It's not an incorporated Astoria, but they have water rights, as I understand it, I guess from the base of the falls into the river. Uh, so there's, and I have not contacted the water resources department to really figure out how that all ties together and who exactly controls what. Um, yeah. It's also a city park for what it's worth outside of city limits but it's a it's part of the city park system interesting isn't it on our inventory uh, one of the inventories 
I think it is. I think I've seen it. Yeah, as a resource. I'm pretty sure it is. As a natural resource, yes, it is. It is. Yeah. Well, that was my concern: is how do you balance this idea that they might turn it into a, a generating facility with the fact it's been identified and I don't know accepted as a a, a resource. I'm not, I don't well, know that, how all that works. That's exactly what goal five is all about, right? Um, it, it's about balancing protection of resources with potentially conflicting uses and balancing of the values of different types of uses. Um, so for example, protecting wetlands um, versus the need for housing um, or you know, protecting fish habitat versus providing energy. Uh, you know, that's really what goal five boils down to is trying to find that balance. And the mechanism that's used is the EC analysis. Yeah. Which, okay. In, in so this, this is just case. an idea. Okay. This is just an idea that that might be needed. Young's Falls might be needed for a facility and if they wanted it, then the whole balancing analysis would be done then. Yeah. Okay, nothing's being given away by this policy. Yeah, that was my understanding is the EC criteria would have, to, I mean, that, that procedure would have to come into play and all of those conflicting elements would have to get resolved before any you know project could proceed i think that's what ian okay. said okay well then retaining this seems like a good idea <laughs> okay good good all right so then i guess we're on to goal 13 um to look ahead i guess at, at the policies that uh, are here and there seems to be just one policy but it's got a bunch of different or i guess there's three policies four policies um so the the first one and it looks like policy one is broken up into some various categories depending on the staff recommendation um so for policy one uh, in the, the a uh I get the staff recommendation is retain the sub policy i like that idea um However, the, it, the thought occurs to me that it, it in ter and, and I don't know where it goes, but in terms of reducing energy and, and uh, conserving energy, you know, the, the, con the, the topical concept of working from home ought to get baked in here somewhere. Um, probably wasn't a, you know, a big idea 20 years ago when all these comprehensive plans were put together, but certainly in the last year, it has uh, has come to the forefront. Um, so I'd like to somewhere uh, make sure that as the county is planning both, especially the county facilities, uh, that it's taking into account, you know, the, both the opportunity uh, to encourage or plan for more work at home uh, options uh, as well as you know baking that into their plans for how big a facility they need and how many people are actually going to use the facility i don't know working at home has got kind of a double-edged sword because if you ask people who are working been working at home for the past year their their own personal bills have been going up dramatically for water and energy um, because, of course, those facilities are not being used at the office. They're being shuffled on to workers. So that's kind of a political consideration, um, not separate and apart from the whole social isolation issues. So I don't know. It doesn't seem to me that it particularly has a place here, but um, those are my two cents. 
I'll just say it'll be interesting to see after the pandemic. I'm sure a lot of people will be studying this topic and looking at, you know, energy savings that occurred in some places and energy gains that happened in other places as a result. Um, so I'm sure we'll learn much more about this topic. I will put down um, incorporating telecommuting where possible and practical here in the table uh, and just add that our experience or my experience has been, uh, you know, that county employees are classified as critical workers and many of us, uh, when things are operating normally and the public is able to freely roam about the world, um, we, uh, we do a lot of in-person business and meetings and so it's not always possible or practical to be working from home because uh, we're providing public services in person. Um, so I'll just add that and um, if everyone's okay with the comment that I've put here in the table, we can move on to sub policy B. Yeah, I think it's a good thing to have. Yeah. Okay, uh, so sub policy B, um, and, and so my comment here was, yes, I, I think we should retain it uh, as recommended, um, but I'd also like to see us speak to, you know, rather than calling out some specific, uh, like solar energy, uh, maybe say alternative energy sources, um, certainly solar is a topical one, but again, you know, geothermal is kind of an up and coming technology that uh, that could be considered god only knows what else it might be five years from now um but you know i i kind of like to expand it to include all alternative energy sources yeah i think that's a good suggestion and is alternative in your mind is that synonymous with renewable I, you know, I I can't think of anything that's rattling around my head in terms of future technologies that that doesn't fit into the renewable category. I mean, as I'm thinking about, um, you know, wind or solar or geothermal, um, you know, or maybe this in-stream hydroelectric. I, I I'm not I'm not coming up with anything that's not renewable. I like renewable because that's what we're trying to get to. Yeah, I like renewable too, just because it's more specific. But I agree with you, Charles. I can't think of any alternative energy sources that aren't renewable. But <laughs> I can. Oh, burning I the word renewable. No, no problem. You can that. use slash could be used as hog fuel. That's one that would. Oh would yeah. Be. And there's also like biomass facilities. Yeah, I, I don't know that. if that's considered renewable. You know, I would certainly consider it renewable, but that's just me. Okay. As long so as you I've like got... capture the <laughs> Right. Understood. Okay. Sub policy C. Um, yeah, this one, I, you know, I, again, I kind of agreed with the staff recommendation. I, I couldn't see any, that nothing occurred to me different. Me neither. I agree with the staff recommendation. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And then uh, C2, C4, C5, and C6 are all deleted. Is that my understanding? And that, if so, that's fine with me. Yeah, that's, that's what I did. I lined through them, so that was my understanding as well. All right, good. Then for D, um, again, I kind of agreed with the staff recommendation, but the thought occurred, and, and this again, this probably isn't the right place for it, um, but the thought occurred about Recycling, uh, recycling electronics and appliances and things like that. Um, I, I think that the Recology uh, Transfer Station in Astoria does take those items. Is, is that is that accurate? I see Gail nodding her head. Um, yeah. Yes. There's a limit on what they take. Um, I recently tried to take a bunch of 
things that fall into various categories there and some they could take and some they couldn't, so. Well, to the, to the extent that there's stuff that they don't, it, it certainly would be nice if they did because otherwise people are just gonna chuck it <laughs> somewhere, somewhere it doesn't belong. But the specific yeah. thing I, I suppose I was thinking about was, uh, and, and probably a lot of people are familiar with this in Portland, there's a place called Free Geeks that um, re essentially repurposes. It re does a lot of recycling for electronics, but but more importantly, it, re it repurposes uh, a lot of things, especially computers for, you know, underprivileged, underserved uh, folks that, that, that maybe can't afford it or don't have access to it which is you know, a great public service. Um, so to the extent that there was a way to, and it, it probably isn't something the county could take on, it seems no. like a private sector thing, but you know, if there's any way we could encourage that through a comprehensive plan, um, I'd sure like to do it. Well, maybe um, if I could make a suggestion uh, based on what you said, Charles, it, you know, I was taught from a young age about the three R's and that you follow the three R's in order and recycle is the last of the three. The first two are reduce and reuse. Um, so maybe this policy could aspire to focus on those first two items as well. Reduction and happy with that. reuse. Right. That's a yeah, new policy. Yeah, um, I... I agree. Oh, I like that. One thing that availability of um, like plastic alternatives in the county for businesses, you know, like takeout and things like that. Um, I don't know if there's some way to encourage the private sector to make those things available, but. Well, I have a, I'm wondering why such things exist. I mean, you in, in Portland, you can't use styrofoam, you know, for any takeout containers. You haven't been able to for decades. You can't use plastic bags. You, I mean, why, you know, so everybody adjusted and all of our takeout is in cardboard. It's fine, you know, <laughs> it's not really a problem. Um, so, I'm wondering if there could be, that is an energy thing, if we could be encouraging, um, that's, is that a reuse or a, that doesn't seem to be within the three R's. That's a reduce. reduce. Oh, it's, it's recycling, the paper. Well, yes, but it's eliminating the fossil fuel based, uh, products, you know, eliminating the use of them. Reducing so I, the use I would just say that I think, I would say that I think that the, uh, you know, elimination of certain products is going to be a matter of whether there's political will to do that. Um, I know, it, you know, cities like Portland have created ordinances to ban certain materials. Uh, and then recently there was the statewide ban on plastic bags. So, um, you know, just pointing out that it's something that goes along with political will. So if if you wanted to put a recommendation in here that we uh, ban certain materials in the county uh, by an act of the Board of Commissioners, we can put that in there. I think so, that'd be good. Is that oh, what yeah. you were suggesting, Linda? Well, a lot of things require political will, and I think the point of having committees is to see where, you know, the citizens, the public wants to go. And most everybody I know would like to um, have a cleaner environment. Um, so, yeah, why not? And I would certainly agree with that. Um, and this seems to be a good place to do it because it talks about recycling. And, and as you said, Ian, I, th I really like the idea of expanding it to the three R's. I mean, why, why be restricted? Or maybe put it on the new page because it is a little bit different than recycling. 
Yeah. Reducing. Whatever. Ian, I have a question. Uh, if we put, if the county passed such an ordinance on any of these things, would that apply to the cities as well? No, they would have their own regulations unless this was some kind of um, cooperative agreement between the mm -hmm. county and the cities. Mm -hmm. Okay. So should we be saying something about that we should encourage a cooperative agreement so that the county would be free of uh, disposable plastics? So is, is everyone okay with what I have written down there? Does that capture your recommendations? Yes. Yeah. All right. And certainly, yeah. Good. certainly the county has tools at its disposal to, you know, once this gets translated into something more meaningful like an ordinance, the county has, you know, tools like you know, tax incentives or, uh, you know, other incentives where, you know, they could use those tools to make this more attractive for the private sector to enter in, to, to start doing it rather than the county. But, you know, I, I, I don't think we need to speak to that um, in, in our, our goal. I mean, the goal, I think, is good the way you've got it. All right, okay. policy two. Um, this one, I I guess I agree with the staff recommendation, although it says delete sub policies A and B1 as those policies are already adopted. I, I, I don't know exactly where they're adopted and and I, I didn't read through go back and read through the comprehensive plan to find where, which I probably should have done, where where they're adopted. I figured I'd just take the lazy approach and ask Ian. I will take the lazy approach and defer to Gail. And, and, Gail, and Gail took the lazy approach and just remembered that as she had been typing out some of these policies for various other meetings in the past that they, they had been um, that I remember typing them, uh, but I don't remember which goal specifically that I had typed them for. So, but uh, if you want, we can go back and pull those and bring them back. I have a note on policy two. I hope it's the same one. Oh, wait, no, subdivision B. Okay, we'll wait. No, I think we're there. Todd, I mean, we're talking okay. about policy two. Okay, on subdivision B, uh, it says when top typographical conditions or natural features make street orientation for good solar orientation desirable, uh, and it goes on to, to recommend that uh, lots should be uh, oriented to a to the uh, south, that's good. But then it says um, yards and setbacks approach may be in lieu. Hmm. I think that's different than what. Did that get changed since we first got it? No, this hasn't been changed. Okay. So um, yeah, the way that I'm reading that is it's, it's encouraging design that would be more energy efficient because as you probably know very well Todd as an architect um, you know the way you orient lots and buildings can have big implications on energy requirements for those buildings for heating and cooling and ventilation and such. I had uh, yes that's exactly what my response was but I, I'd had noted that it said it was telling uh, maybe it's somewhere else oh yeah that here the one above um, 
solar orientation of windows and buildings running by streets east and west and uh, lots north and south. If if houses are built in a typical fashion and the lots are north run north and south, then the gable end would be facing south and not the surface of the roof with, with standard construction. So I would like to strike that, that whole thing about saying how lots should be run or streets should be run. It would be unique to each site. And the next part is correct, that the, that the roofs need to be sloping towards the south. But this, this uh, could be counterproductive or at least not be applicable in most circumstances. So Todd, I just struck from that first sentence in sub policy B1 um, by running streets and so on. So the sentence would just be should maximize the opportunity for solar orientation of windows in buildings. That's good. That's fine. But this yeah. says we're delete. You're recommending we delete B1. No, well, this is the first part of B1. Uh, B1 talks about windows, and windows are a good source of solar gain as well as roof collection. So it would be, it's good to have that in there in this environment. Right, so in the, the staff recommendation is separate from your recommendation. Um, so you can make whichever recommendations you want and you don't have to agree with the staff recommendations. And it, it sounds like we aren't sure where B1 is adopted, is that right? Yeah, uh, sub policies A and B1. Um, but assuming they are, I agree with the staff recommendation. I just, you know, I, I just couldn't find them. So. And then I think I'm kind of also agreeing with Todd that I'm not sure it's necessary to specify street orientation and uh, lot orientation in an area as topographically diverse as our area, I think the, the important point is to maximize the solar exposure. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm really confused. I thought these are the policies of the comprehensive plan. So I don't understand what it means when it says these policies have been adopted. Are they, are they, does it mean they appear elsewhere in the comprehensive plan? So this is duplicative? Is that what we're saying? That would be correct. Yeah. Okay. Because the policy, there's, yeah, the they're policy good. says they shall be adopted, which as I read it, and I can see reading it right at this moment, perhaps there's a different interpretation, but as I read it, as I was pulling this information together is that they had not really been adopted at that point, but they wanted to include them in the comprehensive plan. And it may just be that their language, as I read it at this moment in time, is that they are saying by adoption, we are adopting these policies. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah think and I you could also, yeah. right. So it says the following land use policies shall be adopted. So I think you could also read it as to implement this policy too, that you know you would go into the zoning code and adopt these policies in the in the actual zoning ordinance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you don't take them out of the comprehensive plan just because the zoning ordinance is implementing them. I think they're good. I would actually leave policy, tinker with it um, as Todd is suggesting, but I think policy too is all good and I would I would leave it okay so what I put down is to retain the policies as amended with the edits there on the left how does that sound yeah yeah I'm happy with that fine yeah 
<clears throat> okay, policy three. Yeah, so this one, um, I also agreed with the uh, staff recommendation to retain the policy. It seemed logical to me. Yep, me too. Me too. Yeah. Yes. You okay with it, Linda? I see your mic's on, so. Whose lights on? No, you, your mic just came back on. I thought maybe you you were you were wanted to say something. No, I'm good. Okay. All right, good. So policy four. I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not sure what that meant. Gail, do you want to say how you how you were reading this one or how you are reading this one? Well, I guess when I read it, um, I think previously we had in policy two, um, there was discussion about how you should cluster together, uh, you know, commercial uses and residential development and to reduce trip uh, trip numbers and trip mileage overall. And so as I read that, if you want to conserve energy, the areas where we have the most intense development are um, the rural lands zones, which would be the RA1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 1, 2, whatever, 5 and 10. Um, and then the development lands, which would be like the Arch Cape zone, which are more dense development. So we've already put all the land in the county into one of these categories, including rural lands and development lands. So the only time this would really apply at this point would be if somebody came in to change the zoning designation and the comprehensive plan designation of a piece of property. And then at that point, we would want to consider, you know, would, it, would a change to a more intense development be consistent then with energy conservation goals and goal 13. Okay. Does everyone follow mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Logic. It's yeah. like having memorializing the, the need for that consideration is a good thing. Yeah, I agree. Okay. All right. So that's it for uh, table one. And if if you would like, we can go to table three. Yeah, I think so. Okay, and I apologize. I have another meeting at 11 that I need to go get ready for, but um, thank you for letting me sit in. Very good discussion. But well, I'm glad you were here. Thank you, Gail. Yeah, oh, you're thank welcome. You, Any questions? Bye. Bye. Bye, bud. Okay, so we have a couple of items here um, under issues to be addressed that you've added. Um, if you want, we can start at the top with the staff recommendation and then um, go to the two that you've already brought up to see if there's any changes we wanna make to that and then go to any other issues to address and the corresponding solutions. So the... Um, First issue that was identified was to encourage the use of alternative modes of transportation wherever possible. Um, and so the recommendation was to require new development projects, specifically subdivisions and commercial developments or projects in rural communities, which is a defined term in our ordinance. So Arch Cape is one of the rural communities Miles Crossing is a rural community. Um, Napa and Swenson are a rural community and Westport is a rural community. So these are areas of the county with more int intensive residential and commercial development that are almost like mini cities, uh, even though they're in unincorporated areas. So I just wanted to make sure everyone's aware of that terminology, rural communities um, is defined. Um, so to incorporate bus stops, walking paths, or bicycle paths, wherever possible. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. 
May I ask a yeah. question? Um, what is a subdivision? A subdivision is a division of land into four or more parcels. Well, so four or seven. Four. So a partition seven. is three or fewer parcels, and a subdivision is four or more. But this is in these um, rural communities where, at least for Arch Cape, have already been platted. So there's not very much land to subdivide. We're trying, you know, if anything, you want to put it back together <laughs> and have the lots joined up. So I don't um, quite. I mean, well, and keep in mind this is a this is a countywide recommendation, not just for the Southwest right. Coastal Planning Area. Yeah, yeah and okay. maybe I can add an example. Um, so in Cove Beach, we've had two subdivisions uh, put in here since I have lived here. That's 20 years. Um, each of the, even though our community was plotted in 1927 into hundreds of 50 by 100 foot lots. Over the years, a lot of those lots uh, ended up getting consolidated as people bought big chunks of land. So, you know, speed ahead some, you know, 50, 60 years, um, people then came in and said, okay, well, now I've got this big chunk of land, maybe it's 10, you know, 8, 10, 12 acres. Now I want to carve that up into, you know, back up into individual lots for homes and and therefore we ended up you know having two subdivisions created in our area so um i i think even though there might you know the, the land might have been platted originally into 50 by 100 foot lots over time both in Car arch cape and in cove beach um various owners have recom taken away all that 50 by 100 foot stuff and ended up with big chunks that eventually I suppose they will somebody will want to carve back up into a subdivision okay so if you had a block let's say you know 12 lot 12 50 by 100 lots if you divide it if you partitioned it into at least four parcels it would be a subdivision is that right that, that's, I mean, I think if you, if you did that I, and you made a subdivision out of it, yes, but I, if you certainly, if you, I think if you sold each individual plot off to, to somebody else over time, then it wouldn't be a subdivision. But if you wanted to develop all four of them at, or more at once, then I think the county would say, yes, that's a subdivision and you're going to have to follow the subdivision rules. Yeah. Okay. Well, what also plays into it is the legal status of the underlying plat if the plat hasn't been vacated uh, so those underlying 50 by 100 lots are still there um, we normally would actually process it as a property line adjustment if somebody wanted to um, you know break a block into legal currently legal minimum lot size parcels um, then we normally would process that as a property line adjustment and there's a you know a pretty complex set of state regulations that we use uh, in ORS chapter 92 um, which provides guidance on partitioning and subdividing land and legal status of parcels that have already been created in the past and so um, anyway it's subdivisions as we define them and as, as we would normally see would be uh, a larger parcel of land which doesn't necessarily have an underlying old plat um, and someone is creating a, a new development. So where we mostly see them right now is on the Clatsop Plains west of Highway 101. Um, there was a recent subdivision in the Miles Crossing area off Lewis and Clark Road near the school. Um, that is sort of what we would traditionally 
C as a as a subdivision. So again, the recommendation here is to incorporate the use of alternative modes of transportation. Um, so I would you know suggest instead of getting bogged down in in what's a subdivision and what's not, um, to focus on the energy sources and energy conservation <clears throat> aspect. And uh, again, the recommendation, excuse me, is to incorporate bus stops, walking paths, and or bicycle paths wherever possible. And I'm, as I said, I'm happy with that. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's good. I'm just trying to think how one could expand that into some place like the east side of Arch Cape where the lots are being developed, you know, one by one. So all of the nice things like walking paths and open spaces are really, um, you know, not something that is included in the different um, aspirational goals. And that's it's probably not anything that fits in this section, but that's just where my my head is always going to try to figure out how we can have those amenities here. Because they are good. You know? Right. Yeah, no, I hear you, Linda. And I would suggest maybe that's um a separate issue to be addressed and maybe has a separate solution. Um and so I'm adding that down here now as a fourth item to address and um, I'm interested to hear if you all have any proposed solutions for how to incorporate walking paths and or bicycle paths in Arch Cape. Um, I'm going to add here especially east of Highway 101. Use the, uh, the public rights of way. Do you have any suggestions for how to equitably distribute that cost? Well, I think I think we we really talked about this last time. I, I can't remember under what category, but we spent a lot of time talking about this issue about street vacations. Um, and you know, I think as Linda and others pointed out, um, you know, certainly in Arch Cape and in Cove Beach. Uh, there are a number of platted streets that have never been developed, but those platted streets are public land. And, you know, to, to allow uh, property owners to vacate that street and therefore turn public land into private land, uh, I, I'm not real happy about that. Um, I, I think that should be done uh, very thoughtfully and very infrequently, especially if there's public benefit uh, to having that platted street remain a platted street and providing public access. Right, yeah, and we've got all that down. Um, okay. So uh, I guess my question is, are there any solutions the group would propose for how to incorporate walking paths aside from the things that we've already addressed in previous meetings? You asked about cost. Are you talk, thinking of the cost to um, clear them and maintain them? Well, so when, when you require something as a condition of approval for a development, you have to be able to tie the impact of the project to the burden of the condition of approval legally, constitutionally. Uh, it's a matter of you know due process. Um, so you know you couldn't, for example, say um, Joe who wants to build a house um, a mile east of Highway 101 on Shingle Mill is going to have to pay for a sidewalk all the way from Highway 101 to his house. Right, that wouldn't be equitable or fair or um, equivalent to the impact of Joe Schmo's development on the community. So, um, and the same thing comes along with, you know, when whenever we require road improvements um, as a result of a development project, we have to look at 
the equitability of whatever we're requiring in terms of the impact of that project. Hmm. Well, I am thinking of using public land that is not going to belong to any private land owner um, for a trail. So I was, think, I was thinking you were trying to think how can we, you know, either find the money in the county to create and maintain these or how can we get some assistance. Um, I do know that um, I just learned that um, Nancy Chase was, uh, I didn't understand this properly, telling us last time about street vacations that could happen with a trail easement uh, being attached to them. Um, I don't know, but that requires a street vacation. Um, I don't know. I think the community would be more than willing to uh, set up a program that help maintain uh, trails. I may be speaking out of turn, but I do believe that um, there's already a committee that cleans up along the highway and they have more people than they can use. So I think that would be actually a popular uh, volunteer activity in the community. Um, you know, if we could just identify which rights away were appropriate for trails and which were gonna be needed for access to as lots develop, we might be able to make some progress. Okay, so I've got down here to explore the priority areas and funding methods for construction and then also ongoing maintenance. Good job, Ian. <laughs> okay, good. So what else do we have already under table three? We got offshore generating, generation including wave and tile, that's good. Anything below that I can't, I so can't see. Todd, you brought this one up, uh, the second item here in the table, offshore generation, including wind, wave, and tidal energy. Did you have any proposed goals or policies to go along with um, just, you know, including that, those topics? My, my idea was that we shouldn't foreclose those. Uh, so uh, something to the effect that we should uh, continue to investigate uh, options for those things <clears throat> and you know so we're not blocking them or, or ignoring them well we started out this meeting with margaret telling us that they are actually prohibited in the marine reserve areas and right. how much of that is how much of that is the class of county coast margaret not much no not much yeah, it's not a lot so it's like just south of our, just south of Arch Cape, the actual Cape, um, okay. down to uh, to just north of Manzanita. So like Neocani Beach, but not Manzanita Beach. Yeah, just less okay. than a mile. And why is it prohibited? Um, that's part of the policy for marine reserves um, is no no ocean development is permitted in marine reserves or marine protected areas that were designated by the state. Because of the risk to the animals or the ecosystem? Uh, um, yeah, so ecosystem disturbance just by constructing something that big and then also uh, whatever um, whatever you would have to construct to bring the energy on shore, like so the cable landing or whatever you call it, um, that would be a, a big disturbance to the um, ocean bottom there. And also the rest of the area while it was being built. Yeah. So I guess I would want to, if we're going to put explore as Todd says, I'd like to see it say something about the environmental impacts, balancing those, or um, 
you know, if feasible, <laughs> given in the right. environmental impacts. Right. And, and this is one, uh, Gail touched on this earlier, but anything that's offshore is generally going to be under state or federal jurisdiction. Okay. So what I put down as a suggestion was to cooperate with state and or federal agencies. Um, okay. And maybe we could add on to that, um, like in exploring potential sites. Very good. And reviewing development proposals. <clears throat> Great. Can we add something yeah. about environmental impacts? Right. Is that uh, too much? Well, I think the environmental impacts are going to be regulated by the state and federal agencies and not by the county. So I'm not sure what we would be adding to that discussion. Okay. We'd be adding that we care. Okay. <laughs> I will put down ensure environmental impacts are minimized Consider. to the greatest extent possible. <laughs> How about that? Oh, that sounds, that sounds great. great. It seems to me that just are minimized is sufficient. Oh, Todd. <laughs> well, it's well, the greatest extent possible, it gives them an out. <laughs> a good bureaucratic language. Right. Pros and cons of using small stream, how good, that looks good. Is there anything below that one? I'm trying to get get an idea how many more we've already got. We, we only have one more after that. Uh, we have the addition of pros and cons, and then we have how to incorporate walking paths. Uh, Okay. Yep. That's you can the last scroll that up. Um, oh yeah, I can. Okay. Uh, thanks, Todd. Um, so somewhere, um, and I was going to make the comment up at the first one, but I decided I'd hold on to it. Uh, but it, but the, the very first one we addressed with alternative modes of transportation. Um, put an idea in my head about utilities. Um, so it, it, when people are putting in subdivisions, um, they, they're certainly required to put in utilities. And nowadays, I know what happened down here with our two uh, subdivisions is in both cases, the county required the developer to put in underground utilities, which is great. What they didn't require, and what I would sure lo wish they had required, was to be planning a bit for the future when um, those subdivisions are put in and the utilities are put in. And what I mean by that is, you know, if if they had been thinking ahead, uh, it would have been really easy at the time they were putting in those utilities to put in a couple of extra conduits for things like fiber optics or future, you know, telecommunication cables or things like that. Um, which again people in those industries uh, certainly know about and recognize and would be able to define so and, and in my eyes that is kind of an energy resource thing because if you don't do that then what happens is you have to come back dig up you know the all of the, the ground and put in some new underground utility that the effort, all of the effort of which is going to chew up an awful lot of resources and energy. Um, so to the extent that we could really encourage people that are putting in subdivisions to, to plan ahead and put in some, even though it might be extra capability and extra cost, um, you know, in, in both the ecological, environmental and financial realms, it would be well worth the investment. I think the county requires uh, that kind of thing already. Uh, I know that when we put in a, a sewer to our house, we had to size it for the houses extending on up the street and we had to put in um, service points along that sewer for potential lots that were to be, would be possibly be developed along it. 
that was a requirement the county made from construction end, I think, not planning. Is that right, Ian? What is your knowledge on that? Um, I don't know much about sewer systems. Generally, we defer to the sewer district um, to communicate any requirements to a property owner or a developer. Um, I hear Charles's point, and I think it it makes sense to me. Um, I'm struggling with how to put that into a sentence or two for this table. So if anyone has a suggestion, I will get that written down for us. So what I wrote down was require expansion possibilities when putting in new subdivision utilities. And that certainly captures my thought, but I don't know if that translates to something useful for this exercise. So I put down a, a proposed solution. And I think this will potentially also come up when we go to goal 11 um, in a, a few months, which is public facilities and services. And so that's where we'll be looking more at things like, um, you know, water, sewer, electric, internet, all those kinds of things for rural areas. Okay. So on the left side, I mean, the, the thing in, in my eyes, again, that the reason I considered it useful in goal five is because if you don't do that, then you're going to end up wasting a lot of energy um, to come back and do it later when it, it could have been done if careful planning had been considered at the beginning, it could have been done then. So does anybody else have other things they want to add to this? Would, would you uh, accept uh, a substitution for require for where does it say accommodate new wait no, what happened to that thing you just wrote? Um, it's there at the bottom. So it says um, the issue identified is that it uses excessive energy to add new infrastructure to existing developments. Um, so the proposed solution was to require new developments to provide for expansion possibilities when installing new subdivision utilities, for example, to accommodate new technologies such as fiber optic internet. No, I, I was going to offer, I was going to offer to accommodate likely future expansion instead of provide for expansion possibilities, but it's just a word, it's just a word thing. What, uh, Carl, what do you think? Um, I, 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 I'm happy with it either way. I'm happy with what, uh, you know, for the. Okay. You know. Let's let's leave okay. it alone. Okay. Any other new issues? All right. So I have one last one on my list, and that that has to do with mass transit. Um, again, under the. And, and there's probably another goal that this fits under, but just, you know, in the vein of thinking about energy conservation, um, to the extent that the county had more, I mean, we've talked about clustering things so that, you know, the the homes are close to the amenities so that there isn't as much travel required, but, but I can't remember anybody saying a word about mass transit in that same sense of, you know, conserving the use of energy um, by having mass transit instead of not having it. So I, I don't know if it fits here or not, but I'll 
defer to Ian or the rest of the group. Just looking back to our existing policies. So under goal 13, policy 2A, we have shopping, cultural, medical, educational, and other public facilities shall be encouraged to cluster, uh, it says in urban growth boundaries, so that one trip can serve several purposes uh, and so that the possibility of public transportation will be enhanced. So I think that's maybe touching on what you're saying, Charles, but sounds like could be modified to better fit your suggestion. Well, certainly my suggestion is to, to encourage mass transportation. And, and if that's going to be adequately addressed uh, in another goal, like transportation, which it pro probably is, um, that's fine. It, it's just the thought occurred to me about um, the energy, uh, the energy implications when I when I looked at the very first uh, uh, comment on this page about alternative modes of transportation to better, uh, you know, non to better utilize energy. I, it, but if it if it fits better under transportation, fine. We, we can leave it for there. May I suggest we take the in urban growth boundaries out of that one you had it before, though? There's certainly Arch Cape is not within um, any kind of urban growth boundary. Correct. Does everyone agree with striking? Yes. In urban growth boundaries here. I heard Charles say yes. I, I yes, I say yes. I heard Todd. Yes. Margaret. Yeah, let's strike that. I think okay. it's probably fine. Okay, and then back over on table three, I put down here clustered development provides opportunity for public transit and reduces energy use. So was there a suggestion, Charles, that you wanted to recommend here? Not that I can think of. Well, you know, if we want to get um, modern, we could talk about shared um, a, a shared vehicle program, like the, you know, the shared cars, the shared bicycles that have, um, you know, stations at these uh, commercial areas and that people can check out. You know, the thing about being at least in the south part of Clatsop County, is you don't need a vehicle very often. You know, people should, I mean, maybe they go someplace once or twice a week. Um, it would be nice to have an alternative rather than everybody owning a car. Um, we could explore that. Motorized bicycles. Well, they're a bit distant for that, but that's an excellent idea to have a, say, electric car station there that could be checked out with a credit card for short trips up to Seaside or down to Manzanita or Cannon Beach, even for that matter. Yeah, not electric bikes because we wouldn't want to take those on the highway. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Okay, so I put down to encourage development of public transit and car and or bike sharing programs. Perfect. Perfect. That's good. Good. Thanks for bringing that up, Linda. Huh? Thanks for bringing yeah. that up. Anybody got any other issues or 
should we say we've finished our job for the day? I do I like have a question. I ahead. have a, que a question. Um, would it be possible to get these um, charts, the tables, with the uh, comments that with our work product on it? back so that we actually had a, a way to keep track of what we do. The minutes, you know, they, they're gotten a little short form, which is fine, but these are, would be very helpful if there was a way you could send them to us or post them somewhere or something. Sure, absolutely. I think maybe one time, I don't know that I'd done it, I've done it every time, um, I just attach the tables to the minutes. So I can that just make work. that a regular practice if that works for you. Um, so I'll just attach the completed worksheets to the meeting summaries. Perfect. I like that. Okay. And how do we go back and get past ones? I can just distribute those to you as an email attachment. Okay, Great. when you have time, it's not urgent, but. Yeah, no problem. That's easy enough to do. Thank you. Appreciate that. So we yeah, include us. Oh, oh go ahead. please. Go ahead, Todd. Yes, Todd, I, I will include all of you. Oh. So Ian, I'll turn it back over to you for public comment. Okay, so it looks like we still have uh, Nancy Chase. And Guido Paparoni, I think, is here by phone now. And we also had Carol Johansson join us. So if any of you would like to provide any comments at this time, please go ahead. I see Nancy. Go ahead, Nancy. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to mention electric car charging stations would be good. <laughs> I'm not clear how they're, you know, but if you're obviously traveling through the coast, that would be nice to have. And then on the um, trail issue, you know, I really see, I don't know all your the little communities along in this part of the planning area, but the need for some trail planning, professional trail planning. And for, if you take Arch Cape as an example, you know, how do you, um, there are probably some destination regional trails people would want to go on and you, how do you connect to that without getting in your car and driving to a pull off. And then as the east side builds up, you know, the you, you don't want to free for all of, of crossing 101 and going through established neighborhoods to get to the beach. So how do we how do you provide a safe trail that people will use to get over to the beach without conflicts? And uh, the Oregon Department of Transportation, ODOT, has a good trail planning grant as well as trail implementation. And with Highway 101, I think it would be kind of a easy uh, grant to defend and to maybe receive some money. And this trail planner, whoever it would be, would kind of work with the neighborhood and the community to cobble together, you know, combinations of streets and uh, streets that could be vacated with trail easements, as well as maybe uh, going through private land that would you know, require uh, future funding for acquisition. But I really see trail planning as, as a big thing to keep people out of their cars and to uh, keep them safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, Guido, I think you're here by phone. I'll, I'll unmute you if you'd like to provide any comments. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Ian. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Thank you. I, I was uh, wondering, with all the advancements in power gen generation, winds and uh, and tides as well, would there be space to have a seminar like you've hosted in the past to get somebody to come in that actually knows about this and is up to speed on, on all the new development and uh, and actually share that with everybody? Would that be a possibility? That may be possible. I think we probably wouldn't look at that until um, toward the end of this process under goal 19, which is ocean resources. Um, 
So I, I will write that down as something of interest. And then I would also um, point you to, I have a website here. You won't be able to see it since you're on your phone, but um, I can send you some links, Guido. There's um, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management. It's a federal department um, which is involved with uh, exploring the potential for offshore energy generation. The state is also studying this. There are two pilot projects, uh, one that's currently been developed off the coast of Newport and one which is proposed, I think, further down the coast. Um, so it definitely seems like uh, a resource that is uh, being explored and may be developed if these studies pan out. Um, according to this 2011 study um, that's referenced by the Oregon Department of Energy, there is uh, at least enough potential wave energy in the inner shelf um, to power about 28 million homes, which is 143 billion kilowatt hours. So huge potential. The question is, is it practical? And I know that is being studied right now by a lot of people. And um, so I personally have attended a couple of webinars on this topic, and I will look into whether those are available. They were put on by uh, state and federal personnel, and there was some insight provided by private sector um, people who are exploring this as well. So if I am able to track those down, I will send you those links and I'll send that information to the committee as well. Thank you. That would be fantastic. And thanks for that summary as well. You're welcome. Uh, is there any, are there any other public comments? All right, Charles, I don't hear any other comments coming in. All right, well, I thank everybody for participating today. We we came in just- I, a, I, I have a, a question. Oh, sorry, Charles, go ahead. Uh, right. Do we have, uh, could you review the upcoming meetings with us? Well, as far as I know, the only one we've got uh, scheduled uh, in terms of a, a, another Goal 5 topic is March. And I think March we were going to be talking or revisiting actually uh, wetlands and riparian resources. I, I'm not, I don't know exactly what happened to the mineral mineral aggregate thing, but I'm going to let Ian comment on that. Sure. So with regard to wetlands and riparian resources, I got an update on that this morning. We had a staff meeting, and Crest is still working on that project and we're not expecting to have anything from them for a meeting in March. Um, so TBD on when we will circle back to that, but we are waiting on um, Crest to wrap up their project and then we will be able to present that information to you and, and take your recommendations. So I think the next thing we'll be looking at, um, and Julia, can correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, would be goal six in March. Is that right, Julia? Yeah, that's what we were looking at, Ian. That's correct. And remind me what goal six is? Air, water, and land quality. So a lot of it will have to do with drinking water. Oh, good. Okay. And then, then the uh, countywide meeting is scheduled for the next one is when? Uh, let me check my calendar, Todd. Let's see. So if you aren't aware of how to find the land use planning calendar, uh, on the county's website, if you click community development, and go to land use planning, scroll <coughs> down. We have the land use planning calendar. There we go. Okay, Please. thank you, that's good enough. Uh, so yeah, next week, Wednesday, the 17th, is the countywide advisory committee. Okay, thanks Ian, thanks for the... 
Would that Good. also be on the the bigger county calendar when I click on county calendar? I'm not sure. I don't normally use that one, so I'm not sure. Okay. Let's see. I have a question. This is Julia. Um, I see the countywide advisory committee on both the 17th and the 18th. Is that correct? I just noticed that too, Julia. I, um, let's see. I I have on my personal calendar, I have the 18th. Okay. So we may need to verify because it looks like we've got an error running there. So we'll need to verify and Ian can get that to you. Yeah, if you get that back to me, I'd really appreciate it. Yeah, and Todd, you should be receiving email notifications about those meetings from Gail. Okay. I just want to get it in my calendar. Right. Well in advance. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll clear that up for you, Todd. So, Todd brings up an. Uh, uh, thanks for asking the question, Todd. You also um, created a question in my mind since we do have a few minutes left. Um, had, do you have any kind of feedback for us on how the countywide uh, meetings have been going lately? Yeah, we. Uh, I. Let's see. How can I do that? I I usually have that as part of my ready for a report. Um, and Todd, I've been meaning to add this back onto the agenda and have been, been meaning to talk to you about it. But when we first started this process, I think we had a standing agenda item um, yes. for the countywide liaison to, to give the group an update. So, um, you know, at our next meeting, uh, maybe you could give a longer update on what's been happening over the past several months. And then we can keep that on the agenda for future meetings as a standing item. That'd be good. I can I can also just uh, briefly say that um, that aspect has been uh, I that aspect has not really been carried so much. We we go through uh, item by item the uh, recommendations of the various groups and discuss those and and uh, usually adopt most of those so that. Uh, for each item that we have reviewed, there will be a spreadsheet that, or a table that has every work group or every planning group on it, and the recommendations of the various planning groups are listed out. Um, we go through those and uh, and include most of the recommendations. And that would be a good thing, Ian, for you to to make available as well. So those can be found on our website. If you uh, download the agenda packets, um, it'll include all the materials you committee members get uh, at the countywide committee meetings. It will also have the meeting summaries. Um, and then we also, just like with your committee, uh, we publish the recordings of each countywide advisory committee meeting to our website. Okay. Uh, and so that table is uh, is shown. We can the, our, to our, my group, knowledge, our committee could yes. See. So if it's if it's something that was included in your agenda packet, it will be in the agenda packet that's available for download online. I, I was referring to once we've gone through them as a countywide committee, those altered or uh, updated tables. Are they available somewhere? Uh, I'm not sure, Todd. I'll have to get back to you on that. That'd be what would people would probably want to see that more than anything else. Yeah, I would agree. Right. I would imagine, again, similar to your committee, that it's captured in the meeting summaries. Uh, I'm not sure if the tables themselves are attached to the meeting summaries, um, as I'm planning to do with your group. But um, you know, Gail has really been running the the countywide committee, so I would need to ask her um, what she's been doing and if those tables are available, if they're not already included in the meeting summaries. Great. Yeah, that'd be good to have.
Any other uh, questions or comments? All right, great. Well, I think we've done our work for the day. So I thank everybody and the public for joining in. And we'll see everybody or yeah, hopefully see everybody or hear from everybody um, in March. Yeah, I have your next okay. meeting down as um, Wednesday, March 10th at 10 a.m. Wednesday, March 10th. Okay. Great. Thank you okay. all. Okay, thanks everybody. Thank right. you, Ian. Yeah, You're thanks, welcome. Ian, for... Thank you all, as always, for all your work. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Right. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.